Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. And remember, context is everything. Media Network. Founder and CEO, John Michael. He's reading another textbook cover to cover. This textbook is from the year 1940. Here we are. Chapter 3. How the Southern Colonists Lived. This book is from 1940, and it is from a Catholic school teacher's perspective, because it is all about Catholicism. It's also about American history. Here we are. How the Southern Colonists Lived. Thank you. Early Homes. The first settlers who came to America built very crude homes. The simplest houses were made on the side of clay hills. The clay hill was used as one side of the house. Logs were used for the other sides. The logs were just set on the ground. The hard ground served as a floor. The roof was also made of logs. Strong logs, called rafters, supported the roof. Better homes were built when settlers had more time. The four walls of these homes were built with logs. The roofs were made of thatch. Thatch is like, um, looks kind of like hay. Straw or reeds used to cover the roof is called thatch. Right. The custom of using thatch for roofs in America was natural for the English colonists. Homes in England often had thatch roofs. After sawmills were put up, homes were often built of planks, thick sawed pieces of timber are indeed called planks. Sometimes these plank houses are spoken of as frame houses. The roof, the roofs were often covered with shingles. The thin pieces of wood used to cover roofs are called shingles. Most of the houses were small. There was one large room on the ground. A loft, or small room under the roof, was used to place for a place to sleep. The family climbed the ladder to get to the loft. Heat rises, after all. How furs and skins were used. New heading. The skins of raccoons and opossums and the deer the skins of the raccoon the possum and the deer were used for clothing the skin of a raccoon made a fine cap deer skin was very useful it made a strong soft leather which was often called buckskin clothing for men was often made from buckskin deer skin had many uses in the home a deerskin made a good rug for the bare floor. A deerskin made a soft, warm blanket for the bed. A seat for a chair could be made from buckskin as well. New heading. Farming in the South. The chief occupation of settlers in the South was farming. Before planting could begin, the ground had to be cleared. This means that trees and bushes were removed to clear the ground for planting crops. The southern farmers early turned their attention to the growing and staple crops. The growing of staple crops. A staple crop is an important or principal crop. A staple crop is grown to sell. That is why it is sometimes called a money crop, a cash crop. Tobacco was the most important staple crop grown in the South. It was a money crop of the South for many, many years. The planters became wealthy selling tobacco to the people of the countries of Europe. This was one of the reasons why Southern planters were able to buy furniture, clothing, 
and many other things from England. Rice and the indigo plant were also grown. The indigo plant, what the heck is the indigo plant? I never heard of that in my life. Rice and the indigo plant was valuable. Tobacco and the indigo plant was valuable because it yielded a blue dye. Tobacco, rice, and indigo were three chief staple crops of the South in the early days. Later, cotton became the most important staple crop. These crops were raised on large farms called plantations. Slaves were used to do the work in the field. This form of farming came to be plantation system. There were three facts to remember about the plantation system of farming. The first fact. The plantations were very, very large, too. A staple crop was usually grown on the plantation. And three, the work was largely done by slaves. Each planter set aside a garden patch where wheat corn and vegetables were raised for the planters and the slaves. These were not money crops because they were raised to use rather than to sell. The vegetables most commonly grown were potatoes, carrots, turnips, and parsnips. Young pear trees and apple trees were brought to America from England. These fruit trees grew well on fertile soil in Virginia. Meat supply. The early settlers had plenty of meat. Cattle and hogs were brought over from England to America. Cattle were raised on the farms. Hogs were allowed to run about in the nearby woods. Here the hogs allowed to run um, here the hogs fed upon acorns and grew fat. There was plenty of game. Birds and wild animals which are hunted for their flesh, are called game. It was good sport to hunt for ducks, wild turkeys, rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, opossums, and deer. The flesh of duck, turkeys, and rabbits was used as food. The early settlers liked the deer meat. It was called venison. It is called venison. The hunter shown in the picture on page 84 has just shot a very, very large fowl. There's the picture of a very, very large fowl on this page here, closer to my face. That is indeed a large fowl. Later homes. As time went on, better houses were built. Some houses had six or more rooms. Wealthy settlers were able to build large houses of brick, stone, and timber, like the ones shown on this page. The other picture, if you want to go back and look at it. The woodwork inside these homes was the finest of woods. The wealthy planters could afford to have furniture sent over from England. The houses of the poorer settlers remained very simple. These poor people made their own furniture. It was crude, but strong. A tree stump was sometimes used as a chair. A split log with a flat side up was held up by log legs. A tree stump was sometimes used as a chair. A split log with a flat side up was held up by log legs and served as a table. Benches and stools were often made in the same fashion. Education in the South. The plantation system of farming made it necessary for people to live far apart. This made it difficult to have schools for the children. This is chiefly why most people were taught in the home. Wealthy planters were able to hire private teachers for their children. These private teachers were known as tutors. 
ministers were often willing to earn money as tutors. The sons of very wealthy planters were sometimes sent to England or to other countries in Europe to be educated. The daughters were taught fancy sewing and good manners. It was not thought very necessary for girls to be sent away to school. As early as 1693, the William and Mary College was established in Virginia. This was the second college to be established in the colonies. It was named in honor of the two rulers of England, King William and his wife, Queen Mary. Religion in the South. Religion in the South. The Church of England was established Church of the Southern Colonies. The Church of England came to be known as the Episcopalian Church. Now, Epis... Episcopalian. Episcopalian Church. So every settler was compelled to attend the service held at the Church of England. If a person failed to attend the religious service, he was fined. There was little money in the colonies, so the fine was paid but in tobacco. It took 20 pounds of tobacco. It's a lot. Uh, to pay a fine for not attending church. This was a heavy fine because tobacco was a valuable product. There were other sur uh, severe laws in Virginia Colony. Catholics and Quakers were not allowed to enter the Virginia Colony. The people of Virginia did not practice toleration toward people who did not belong to the Church of England. Maryland was the only colony where Catholics were ever able to live. Hence, Mary, one of the dividing lines between Catholicism and Protestantism, is the veneration of the Blessed Mother Mary. If you didn't know, the Catholics do, the Protestants do not. Maryland, befitting of a name, I suppose, right? Where are we? Maryland was the only colony where Catholics were ever able to live in peace. Travel in the South. Travel in the South was not easy. Many of the plantations were located on the rivers. These could be reached by sailboats. Travel by sailboat was a common means of going from place to place. There were no good roads. Indian trails and paths made by the planters were used by horseback riders. It was many years before the South gave any attention to the making of roads. Then travel by horse and carriage or by stagecoach became possible. A stagecoach was a coach or carriage drawn by a horse. A stagecoach traveled over the regular route, over a regular route. The distance between two places on a journey was called a stage, not a road, a stage. The carriage or coach which traveled between place to place came to be called a stagecoach. People lived far apart in the South in these days uh, that, the, that a visit was a real adventure. Southern families took great pride in caring for their visitors. Southerners came to be known for their hospitality. The friendly welcome given to a visitor is called hospitality. Amusements of the Old South. Amusements in the Old South. Horse racing was a favorite amusement. Good race horses were brought over from England. Every man wanted to own a fast running horse. The horse race was a real social event. The Southerners were very fond of horses. Horseback riding was a pleasant kind of recreation. Men, women, boys, and girls all delighted in riding horseback. Hunting was another pastime. Hunting for fowl was a very popular sport. Any bird of the air or any water bird is a fowl. Plenty of fowls lived in the woods and in the lowland marshes. There was an abundance of wildlife in the woods. Wild animals were called game. Game hunting was a real sport. Often game was hunted just for the fun of the hunt not because the animal was needed for its flesh or fur. This was unwise because animals were needed were needlessly killed. 
Later game became very scarce in certain parts of the South. Now, I just want to note, they condemned hunting there, and they didn't condemn slavery. But I will note, they harshly condemned slavery when they first mentioned it, which I do think is good that they condemned it. Dancing is a very popular amusement in the South. The violin and, or the flute was played to supply the music for the dancers. The violin was sometimes called the fiddle. This is why the, men, the man who played the violin for the dancers was called a fiddler. Card playing was another favorite amusement among the southern colonists. Thank you. Good day, and God bless. <sighs> this book's from 1940.